Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Jaguars spent a boatload on talent yet again, but have they finally bought some wins? Also, the Dallas Cowboys have some drama to work through with wide receiver CeeDee Lamb. And Florida State and Clemson just may end up stuck in the ACC. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. If there's one thing the Jacksonville Jaguars do as well as anyone in the league, it is spend money in the offseason. They are doing it again this offseason. Uh, Tyson Campbell, the latest four year, $76.5 million extension with $53.4 million guaranteed. That goes along with Trevor Lawrence, Josh Hines Allen, big ticket free agents like Gabe Davis, Eric Armstead, Ezra Cleveland. It has been a lot here, Tony Wiggins from Locked On Jaguars. And, and Tony, I think the question that I want to know from you is a lot for what? A, a lot. Uh, let me let me just say a lot for a lot. Now, I'll say that because this was the year that they were supposed to be focusing on being a draft and develop team. Right. And then they go spend all of that money in free agency. That was, in my opinion, because they didn't do enough last year. And they're kind of trying to bridge the gap between the missed year and some of the talent deficiencies on the team. The thing that they have done, though, is all the guys from 2021, those are the guys getting contracts. Josh Allen wasn't from 2020. It was 2019. But he got his contract. Trevor Lawrence got his Though they re-signed Foy Oluwakan and now Tyson Campbell, and they're probably going to do Andre Sisko. It's a it's a nice move in the right direction for a team that needs to start acting like a team that's winning if they're going to ever win. But that I, I think that that is where I'm stuck on this because they they won a lot uh, until the second half, and if they were in a market that wasn't Jacksonville, no disrespect to Jacksonville, but they just don't get the coverage nationally that other teams do. I mean, we we watched in real time as Philadelphia burned down in the second half. Yeah. And it's not dissimilar from what happened in Jacksonville. You were on this show talking about it as it was happening. So is it is it enough to get this team in the, going in the right direction? I think it has to be uh, because you almost have to stumble up on the, the greatness that allows you to have a 10 to 12 year run. You know, you got to hit on Patrick Mahomes and you got to have all of these things really, really happen. And once you get close to that neighborhood, you got to just almost try to keep everything in the middle of the road. And I think the Jaguars over the last two years, they still have won more games in two straight years than they lost. They did it two different ways, but they have uh, gone to the playoffs at least one time. I think this is just trying to get back on track and get things back to the way they were without actually having to tear the whole thing down. It's hard to pay people that haven't earned everything that says that you need to pay him, right? And you look at them, you're like, it's all potential. You get kind of tired of telling people you almost have to be here. Whenever you have to say that and start explaining yourself, that's when people get really skeptical. But I'm going to say it again. You almost kind of had to be here, right? When I saw Tyson Campbell play really well at the end of 2022. For sure. And then he got unhealthy last year. I really believe what they're going to do is – they're going to hedge their bets on their scouting and, the, and their ability to, for the coaches to tell them who's elite and who's not. And then they're going to just go and move forward. And I think it's good as opposed to just letting these guys go after one contract. You mentioned the luck you need to have a 10 or 12 year run and, and hitting on the quarterback, hitting on a star quarterback is usually central to that. But Tony, that was supposed to be what Trevor Lawrence is and was. And that is how Trevor Lawrence is getting paid. And we just haven't seen him elevate this team. Now, understanding how many touchdowns got dropped last year, guys couldn't toe tap in the end zone. Some of the just like it, it is it is Keystone Cops if you put together yeah. the the highlights of some of these plays. But I, I think we also expected him to not make some of the boneheaded interceptions that he throws in the red zone. Like they need Trevor Lawrence to play like the guy who was a number one overall pick, considered a generational talent, if they want to get to where they want to get. I think Trevor Lawrence, uh, you, you you just ran the whole gamut. You did see the, the the sort of little rascal type plays from the wide receivers, <laughs> but then you saw the little rascal plays that he had when he was just running and just dropped the ball for no reason. Here's what has to happen. I actually think he needs to stop trying to play like a generational talent mm. and just play like a quarterback that has to just run his team. Just be Troy Aikman, man. That's a first ballot Hall of Famer with three uh, Super Bowl championships. You don't have to match Patrick Mahomes uh, uh, for every sideways throw and every spectacular play that Lamar Jackson makes. What you have to do is run this football team and do it in a way 
that where your talent speaks for itself and you don't have to really, really try too hard. I think a lot of his mistakes was him trying to do too much and live up to that whole here's the prince of promise and all of that stuff. Stay up to date all year on the Jacksonville Jaguars by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Jaguars on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports Today your first listen. Coming up, the Cowboys are trying to come to terms with CeeDee Lamb. Before we get to that, the Minnesota Vikings have extended one of their best young players. No football, no NBA, no problem with FanDuel. With baseball, the Olympics, WNBA should be back soon. There's plenty to dive into over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. The Jacksonville Jaguars, despite their off-season moves, are right on the playoff bubble. FanDuel has the Jags plus 118 to make the playoffs, as well as the second-best odds to win the AFC South at plus 270. The Houston Texans are division favorites, plus 105. If you're a Texans fan, like our editor, Lance Daw, you may look at Houston's over-under. Their win total set at 9.5. So what are you waiting for? Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the moves that make the most out of your summer FanDuel official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. If you're catching this episode after hearing your favorite Locked On show, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Sports today on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. The Minnesota Vikings have extended tackle Christian Derrissaw to a four-year deal worth $113 million with $77 million guaranteed. After drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first round, the Vikings have now extended Derrissaw and Justin Jefferson this offseason. Over on the diamond, the Philadelphia Phillies defeated the Minnesota Twins 3-0 after the game went scoreless until the top of the ninth. Bats come alive in the ninth inning to score three runs in that ninth. Brandon Marsh, Marsh, clutch with that sack fly. I didn't, I was watching it, I was like, wow, this feels like, it feels like a grand slam. It feels like a grand slam. Not like watching the ball travel in the air, but just knowing that they were going to get one run on a sack fly, it might as well have been a grand slam. I was that excited for a sack fly RBI. It all got started in the ninth inning by Bryce Harper. Good hustle to him, of course. Nick Castellanos gave me the breathing room. That was awesome. And it uh, it gets you a win. Now, it gets the team a win. Oddly enough, it gets Gregory Soto a win, who came in. Through nine pitches, only two of them were strikes, walked a guy, had a wild pitch, but recorded one out on a ground out to Alec Bohm where he made a great play, picking the baseball there on a bouncer, slow bouncer to a third, and he stepped on third for the force out, and they got out of that inning. Zach Wheeler, seven scoreless, three hits, seven strikeouts in his first game since the back toitness uh, right before the All-Star game. He comes out there, and he's dominant for seven innings, seven scoreless innings. Does he get a win? No, sir, he does not, because baseball is a funny game, as uh, the great, uh, the late, great uh, Richie Ashburn used to say. Baseball is a funny game, Harry. Hard to believe. Like, that's what, that's what we're dealing with here. The second worst team in baseball has won again. Cue the confetti for the Miami Marlins, who beat the Baltimore Orioles 6-3. What a day for the Miami Marlins, one of their best wins of the season. Why? Because they beat the team with the second best record in baseball. They beat the team that has been great all year long, offensively, defensively, for crying out loud. They're ahead of the New York Yankees in the American League East. That is right. Your Miami Marlins whooped up on the Baltimore Orioles tonight. Game one out of three in the MIA. Yo, 6-3, the final. Jazz Chisholm with a two-run double. Nick Gordon, two RBIs, Jesus Sanchez, a solo shot. The bullpen again lights out. No runs allowed. No runs allowed in four and two-thirds innings. Five strikeouts. <laughs> Tanner Scott, great Scott. Save number 17 for Tanner Scott, the best closer in Major League Baseball. I said it. Come at me, bro. Ex-Cowboys wide receiver Michael Gallup is retiring from the NFL at just 28 years old. Gallo spent six seasons in the league, all with the Cowboys, before signing a one-year deal with the Raiders this offseason. Gallup had recovered from a torn ACL back in 2021, but admitted last year that the mental aspect was something he never got back on track. It's a surprising move for a once-promising young receiver in the NFL. And yes, still young, just 28 years old. This is a reminder of the mental and physical toll that this sport has on its players. There are three certainties in life, death, taxes, and Jerry Jones trying to lowball his best players. Oh, and the Cowboys losing early in the playoffs. I guess that makes four certainties. 
Same as the amount of playoff wins Dallas has since 2000. Cowboy star receiver CeeDee Lamb is refusing to show up for training camp until his contract is extended. But how long will Lamb hold out? Locked on Cowboys hosts Marcus Mosier and Landon McCool discuss. And the other thing is, is every day that CeeDee Lamb misses, uh, yeah. he is subject to a pretty hefty fine, which is my next question. Do we see a potential hold in? For CD Lamb, where he's going to the meetings, he's going to the practices, but he's not actually practicing, or is he just completely going to be away from the team until he gets a new deal? This hold in thing has become somewhat of a new thing. We Jordan Love is currently doing it now with the Packers. We've seen uh, Nick Bosa did it last year with the 49ers. What do you expect to be the case here? Uh, you know, I, I I wouldn't be shocked if if he used one of those strategies or 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 even just a holdout strategy. I mean, frankly, the holdout strategy isn't even you know too uh, uh, terribly terribly bad and expensive. I mean, I think some of the times the teams you know it used to be that the team would pay you back you know some of that money in, in good faith uh, uh, after after uh, you know a certain amount of holdout time. But I think that that's actually been a it's gone. Yeah, teams can't yeah. do that anymore. So. So now that that's gone, I think, you know, it, it, it does, you know, show kind of a seriousness when you when you are doing a true holdout, uh, which is, you know, kind of probably the impetus of creating these sort of, you know, hybrid hold ins that maybe you're not getting fined, but you're also not, you know, a full participant mentally in, in these situations. So uh, I, I do think that, you know, with the change in, in, in the rules there that a holdout probably would not last very long and, 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 and would probably be maybe only, you know, a couple days a week at the most. Uh, but if he decided to kind of, you know, be a, a little bit tricky and, and try to participate in this hold in situation, maybe he has a, a hammy that's tightened up on him. Oh no guys. Uh, and, he, and he can't practice this week. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I just, listen, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that I, I you know, all, all of this is on the table and negotiations, they can be, uh, 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 tough, right? They can, yeah. they can really be, you know, contentious uh, all the way up until the point where you, 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 you smile and shake a hand of a guy that you're going to be working with for the next four years and hand him a whole bunch of millions of dollars and everybody's happy, right? So, yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if all these techniques get used or if, if some of these techniques get used, but I honestly still put my betting odds on this getting done in the first few days of camp. I'll be concerned if we get through the weekend and there's no deal. Like we're yeah. in a week two because then it's like the fr the longer this goes on, the uglier that it could get. Um, so we'll see. I, I would assume the Cowboys are working really hard to try to get CeeDee Lamb back out of the field by practice one or practice two. But again, no real update yet. So we, we, sh we shall see. Stay up to date all year on the Dallas Cowboys by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Cowboys on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, the Big Ten doesn't seem too interested in adding any more teams anytime soon, leaving two of college football's best programs in turmoil. The ACC and Big 12 may be the only two options on the table for Florida State and Clemson. Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti said yesterday that his conference is not interested in adding more programs. Our Locked on ACC host, Alex Dono and Kenton Gibbs, both agree that Petiti's words threw a lot more shade at the Tigers and Seminoles than most realize. Kenton, we now have dueling conference media days going on as the Big Ten kicked off today. And this is what Commissioner Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti said on possible expansion, quote, we're focused on 18. We had to do a lot of work just to add these four new schools. We're really comfortable where we are. We have to get this conference right. This is where our focus is. And I also noticed that when Petiti was talking about the four new members in the Big Ten, like he went out of his way, Kenton, to talk about the four AAU universities that they're adding. AAU is the research designation that Florida State and Clemson do not currently have. And I, I feel like he went out of his way to deliberately say that. And again, like I'm, I'm not saying Florida State and Clemson will never be in the Big Ten, but it, it seems like all these commissioners are, are offering a similar message right now. We're not adding anybody anytime soon. Let's start tiptoeing around it, right? Because you and I have tried to be delicate. I've rewatched some of our shows. We, we may have tried to be too delicate about this thing. The Big Ten is saying, forget those people in very generous terms. They're saying, hey, not now, not now. It's not happening. And here's the thing. 
it could be i was before on the side of oh this could be legal reasoning this is all legal mumbo jumbo the aau designation thing was completely uncalled for completely unnecessary what did that add to the conversation yeah. besides creating an us versus them creating a situation where they not like us and guess who's in the they that's not like the rest of the big Ten, clemson and fsu right ladies and gentlemen this is a moment where i i'm starting to believe and i hope again i hope that the court cases work out fairly equitably all that good stuff this is starting to become a situation where the more these commissioners talk I'm starting to become more concerned for Florida State and Clemson. Not from a standpoint of nobody will add them. That's not the concern. The concern is nobody will add them at the price point that they're seeking. Right. Nobody will add them as a full member right away because what is the competition and incentive to do so? What's, what's the incentive? It seems to me, you know, obviously, nobody would collude with another conference because that's illegal. Very illegal. To yeah, and just to thing. add to something to this, we, we were we were both talking off air. Like it, it almost I, I don't know if these guys are, are tight with Jim Phillips, the ACC commissioner, but it, it all it almost seems like the three of them, Big Ten Commission, SEC Commish, and Jim Phillips are like working together here. Now I, I don't your mark from the Big Twelve is the wild card. I, I don't think he's necessarily like working with any of these other commissions, but it, it almost because Sankey and uh, Sankey from the SEC and now Petiti from the Big Ten. They're both basically saying the same thing to the point where it sounds like they rehearsed what they were going to say about expansion. Yeah, at the end of the day, you have to think about it like this. The Big 12 is wanting to do anything they can to get that big dog status back. Yeah. They want to be in the big dog seat again, so they're willing to take more risks. They're willing to do more to get there. The Big 10 and the SEC right now, this is pure speculation, purely my opinion. I'm not having. I'm not saying I have a source that, that will uh, confirm this. They are in a position of our boats are steady and extremely strong. Yeah. Why would we potentially bring somebody in that's going to go Tasmanian devil and tear this thing up because the Big Ten is making more or the SEC is making more and you're in the opposite conference? Why would we want to bring in somebody who would do something like that, which both of these teams have shown they will do? So, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm not all that surprised because, again, when you are the – I'll say this, winners – Focus on winning. They focus on themselves. They focus on what they can do better. Losers are focused on everybody else. They're focused on what are they doing? How do I do this? Da, da, da. It's very clear that the Big Ten and the SEC right now, they're the winners of the group because they're not looking at nobody else. They're saying, hey, right. we're good. We got the, we got Oregon. We got Washington. We got Texas. We got Oklahoma. Expanded would be nice. Are you a bigger brand in Texas? I don't think so. So we're good. Yeah, outside of maybe Alabama, I don't know if there's a bigger brand than Texas when it comes to college sports, college football specifically. And, you know, again, I'll I'll reiterate something that you and I, we've both been in concert on this because, again, like, you, you know, some people are like, oh, you guys are just haters and you love the ACC so much. No, eventually Florida State and Clemson are going to get out. We're not saying that's not going to happen. You and I have just been saying not anytime soon. And sure. I notice a lot of the other folks out there who, who cover this stuff have been saying, oh, the ACC is going to collapse by June 30th of 2024 and Florida State's going to declare by August 15th that they're leaving and they're going to be out next year. It's become very clear that this is a slow burn and these, yeah. these settlements are not happening anytime soon. It's going to happen eventually, folks. But I think you're looking at 2026 at the very earliest, 2027 being a little bit more conservative and – to what we were just talking about with the AAU designation, Florida State may be able to get that in two or three years' time. So this may – the slow burn of the process may end up working out for them to get into the Big Ten. Uh, my understanding is – I'm not an expert on academics, but my understanding is Florida State is probably a little closer to that than Clemson is. Uh, but Florida State may be able to get AAU designation within two to three years. So – the timeline may fall into place, but I, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, we, we just spoke about it yesterday, Kent, in the comments of the ACC commissioner. Um, I, I've never seen Jim Phillips that animated. He is, he is committed to this legal fight, and the ACC lawyers will do whatever they can. And there are strong arguments on both sides, right? I can understand 
you know, Florida State bringing up the, you know, alleged shady dealings of the previous ACC commissioner. And and obviously, you know, the, the TV contracts aren't fair necessarily, but Jim Phillips brought up the point that Florida State and Clemson happily signed that grant of rights twice, not once, but twice, 2013 and 2016. And by the letter of the law, that seems like a pretty strong argument, right? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sure there are loopholes to anything, but the fact that, hey, now they're unhappy, well, they weren't unhappy to sign that long-term deal, you know, eight years ago. Now, now the goalposts have moved. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's, you know, that's the unfortunate part of this thing. Again, like you talked about, the contracts were signed. Whether or not you agree with everything in it, you had the chance to voice that opinion, abstain from the vote, vote no, not sign it, whatever the case may be, you did sign it. That's yeah. that's just the reality of what we're looking at here. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it is what it is, but I'm, I, I highly doubt that we are looking at a situation here where, again, the Big Ten or SEC adds these teams as, as full members right away, because why would they? And finally, the basketball tournament. Yes, that's still a thing. Continues on. The TBT is an annual single elimination tournament where most teams are featuring professional players representing their former college. The winner of the tournament gets a million bucks. The Kentucky Wildcats decided to put together a team this season and just demolished number one seed. Heard that a team of Marshall alums, 95 to 66 to advance to the Elite Eight. Former Kentucky point guard Tyler Eulis is coaching Team La Familia, proving to John Calipari that it's not that hard to win tournament games. If you're catching this episode after hearing your favorite Locked On show, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Sports today on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. Also, if you're a new subscriber to Locked On Sports today, we're here for you with the biggest stories in sports every day. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports today, which team will make playoff pushes in the second half of the Major League Baseball season? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents... Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.